Hey there, my name is Dr. Matt Antonucci and I'm an Associate Professor of Clinical Neuroscience for the Carrick Institute. And I'm recording this video today because I'm super excited about an upcoming class that I'm about to teach. It's the Carrick Institute's Advanced Clinical Topics class on Movement Disorders. So what we're going to do in the next couple minutes, we're going to talk to you a little bit about maybe three things that we're going to talk about inside of this Advanced Clinical Topics class on Movement Disorders. When we start looking at movement disorders, every single patient that has something wrong neurologically will present with some disorder of movement. So really the task for the clinical neuroscience expert or the functional neurologist is to be able to do uh, an assessment of movement to determine where that movement uh, is breaking down or where it's appropriate and also to, de to determine what part of the neurological system is responsible for the breakdown in movement. Now you can have all different types of movement disorders. We can have movement disorders of our blood vessels, so we call this dysautonomia. We could have movement disorders of our gut, we call this irritable bowel or constipation. We can have a movement disorder of our heart, which we call arrhythmias or tachycardias. So when people think of movement disorders, they often think about movement disorders of the shoulder or the neck or dystonia in the neck or tics or tremors. That's not always the type of movement disorders that we see in clinical practice. We see movement disorders of any muscle system. So really what we have to consider is number one, what type of movement disorder does the person have? Is it a hypokinetic disorder or is it a hyperkinetic disorder? So is there too little movement or is there too much movement? So once we establish whether it's a hypokinetic disorder or a hyperkinetic disorder, we then need to understand how to assess that movement disorder. For example, when you start looking at tremors, there's easy ways to measure tremors or just to observe tremors. You could either have somebody put their hands out in front of you, and if you see a little bit of a shaky hand, that's pretty obvious that there's a movement disorder on one side than the other. But what if you have somebody that's really, really uh, healthy for the most part, but they feel that they have a little bit of shakiness in their hands, and you look at their hands and it's like this, okay? Not so much of a movement disorder there. We're gonna teach you little tricks on how to assess these things more accurately. For example, what we can do is we can simply get a piece of paper and put it on their hands, and when they hold their hand out, what ends up happening is the paper magnifies any type of tremor that they might have in their hand. So as you can see there, the paper is shaking a little bit in my hand, and what that's called is a physiological tremor. So that leads us to the next topic. We need to be able to notice when something is normal, or when something is abnormal. So a physiological tremor is normal. So this upcoming class in the, uh, from the Carrick Institute on Movement Disorders is going to talk about the basal ganglia, the different integration of the basal ganglia from different parts of the brain and nervous system, how to test these things using either gait measurements, UPDRS, the United Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale Standards, and we're gonna start looking at eye movements, balance, center of pressure. We're gonna talk about different topics like this and advanced clinical topics that apply to movement disorders. And then we'll talk about how you can actually treat movement disorders if you don't have a big device like that in the background over there. So where we can change people's orientation of where they are in space. So really what this class is gonna teach you is no matter what type of a practice that you have with a whole bunch of sophisticated equipment or if you literally just have some papers and pens in your clinic, how you can assess and treat movement disorders using applications of clinical neuroscience and plasticity. So I'm super excited to host this course. I'm really excited that the Carrick Institute offers it. And what I need you to do right now is just go uh, click on the Carrick Institute's website and sign up for the course because I can guarantee you that you're going to walk away from this course with tons of clinical gems that you can then take back to your practice and help people better than you've ever been able to help them before. That's my guarantee to you. So I look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much. And we'll see you at the Movement Disorders course. Take care.